probably saw the Guy Ritchie adaptation of the Sherlock Holmes series. But what you probably didn't see was all the esoteric and hidden messages that are encoded in this film that in fact actually show how the real world works, especially in the last two or three hundred years of the British imperial power and its secret society that ran the background and backbone of the world empire. We're given a key to this esoteric interpretation about 20 minutes into the film when Sherlock announces that he, through musical theory, has created order out of chaos. Now, order out of chaos, of course, is the designation of the highest level of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Ordo Ab Cao. The idea here is that the elite, the esoteric secret societies, they are the ones who impose order on the chaos of creation. In other words, they stand in for the deity of Genesis, God in Genesis 1, who, out of the primordial chaos, creates order. The LA Times even noted that the film's antagonist, the villain Lord Blackwood, was specifically based on British Satanist and SIS asset himself, Aleister Crowley. Every single thing we have in Sherlock Holmes comes from the books. It often sounds like Holmes is a walking encyclopedia able to anno <clears throat> annotate which book provided which detail for what movie. That said, the film which hits theaters Christmas Day, follows none other than Conan Doyle's stories, which were deemed too small, but presents Holmes battling the ominous Lord Blackwood, a figure inspired by Victorian occultist Aleister Crowley. If you like this analysis and you'd like to see more like it, go to jaysanalysis.com, or you can purchase my book, Esoteric Hollywood, Sex, Cults, and Symbols in Film, available at jaysanalysis.com at the links provided. Sign copies for $30 inside the U.S. or $60 outside the U.S. The book has over 120 five-star reviews on various platforms, including Amazon and Goodreads. Definitely something that you would enjoy. Amazingly, the film actually mentions the Freemasons under the guise of the Temple of the Four Orders in the film as the backbone, as I said, of the British Empire. In fact, they built the empire and the secret society is said to not only run the empire itself, but also the police within Britain. As a result, they're able to frame people or control the society as a whole. This has been shown by Jessica Harlan Jacobs in her extremely scholarly historical book, Builders of Empire. This is precisely the way the Freemasons worked as a kind of secret society slash espionage operation at the behest of an esoteric occult empire. An important sequence where Lord Blackwood is seen in prison, uh, in prison for the ritual murder at the beginning of the film. We see what is a alchemical version of the cross, and we see the INHS, which in Latin, of course, just refers to the Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. But here, it's a reference to something different. Lord Blackwood is putting on a show, a pageantry, if you will, of esotericism and alchemy to try to distract from his scientific plans. Now, in part, this is true. You will get the impression throughout the film that uh, Sherlock is basically just debunking the supernatural. However, as we see, there's not just an anti-supernatural tone to the film. There's actually going to be a deeper level where there is a kind of esoteric occult aspect of the film, particularly in relation to creating offspring or genetic manipulation through tantric sex magic. Now, you probably didn't catch that in the film. It's very subtle, but it is mentioned specifically. You'll notice about this scene with Blackwood in prison is that we specifically are shown a raven flying onto the ledge and peering through at Blackwood and his incantations and invocations. Now this raven is going to pop up throughout the film at important pivotal scenes and that's relevant for my final analysis that the film is not completely anti-supernatural as we'll see. It's in this scene that Blackwood also cites the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. In the Crowleyan view, the rereading of the text was as a Gnostic ritual invocation. This is, of course, completely ridiculous. The book of John's Apocalypse has absolutely nothing to do with invoking the, the Whore of Babylon or anything like that. However, in the film, there is a Scarlet Woman who happens to be Irene Adler. I think this is a, a bit coincidental, although I think the symbolism is relevant of Irene Adler as a red 
bedeviled woman. But in the case of Blackwood, he's using lying signs and wonders. In fact, none of his signs and wonders are actually real. And in fact, what we see is that Satan, or the Raven, is actually going to be assisting Sherlock. It's Sherlock who is led, in this case, by the power of evil under the symbol of Satan. I'm not saying that Sherlock is necessarily an evil character. I'm just saying that the uh, gift of insight or the light of brilliance, the enlightenment that Sherlock has, uh, actually comes from the devil, although this is quite subtle in the film. It's not actually Blackwood who's the true seer, so to speak, but actually Sherlock. And that's going to be clear when Sherlock himself does the cult rituals. The symbolism of the raven has a lot of uses in various cultures. However, I think the most relevant is in relationship to alchemy, especially since the film does refer to alchemy. The bearded midget, the red-headed ginger midget who is involved in alchemical transformation and process where we see inside of his lab both the Kabbalistic imagery and the Seal of Solomon. His symbolism and usage of the Kabbalah actually shows that it's alchemy that's at the heart of this film. This is why the raven should be seen, I think, in an alchemical context, which signifies the level of negredo stage, the initial state in which both inherent characteristics of prime matter are, and the condition produced by separating the elements is known as putrefaction. And in fact, if you recall, when Sherlock goes into the alchemist's lab, he specifically speaks of putrefaction. That's why the raven, as he shows up throughout the film, is an esoteric messenger, so to speak. This is also how he's used in the history of symbolism in various cultures is as a messenger, as a signifier of a passing out of one state to the next. So the raven in this film is the negredo stage of alchemical transformation, which is exactly what happens not just to Black Wood, and we think of his name, Black Wood, right? Out of putrefaction and into something new. Another important image is the sphinxes or griffins that appear both at the gravesite as well as in the rituals of the order and also in the alchemist's lab. Now in Freemasonic rituals, and this is interesting because Sherlock even mentions this in the movie, they relate to gateways between dimensions or portals or between time and space. And so essentially the griffin or the sphinx is comparable to the biblical image of the cherubim. And in the book of Ezekiel, the cherubim do relate to the governance of the natural order underneath God. In the film, however, it's used to signify the mystical toponymy. In other words, there's going to be a gateway opened according to the rituals and according to Sherlock when he does the society's ritual through the mystical toponymy of locating both uh, the correspondences between names, essences of things, and locations. This is why the pentagram actually draws out a map in England. And not only that, excuse me, in London. And not only that, the five images or places on the, the map actually correspond to the cherubim or the uh, cherubim that are mentioned in Ezekiel because it's a man, it's an eagle, it's a lion, etc. The way that the film relates to the elite using specialized breeding methods based around esotericism and the occult and genetic bloodlines, we see that when Sherlock goes to visit Sir Rotheram, who is the head, the secret head of the Temple of the Four Orders, which is the stand-in for high-level Illuminized masonry or even Crowleyanism, we learn that Blackwood was conceived, as we're told, through a magical ritual with a woman who was not Rotherham's wife. So this is a kind of moon child or magical child that was attempted to be created, and which is what spawned Blackwood. And this is interesting because this does have a reference to the Hellfire Club, which was the actual club created by Sir Francis Dashwood in England, very famous for its romp and revelry 
And if you look at what uh, even Wikipedia notes is that the club's motto was do what thou wilt from Francois Rabelais in the fictional Abbey of Thelema. And that's later where Aleister Crowley would uh, borrow this idea. So the, so the film does have a Crowleyan theme in the background. Ultimately then, Sherlock, the Guy Ritchie film, and remember that uh, Guy Ritchie was at one time with Madonna, so certainly Guy Ritchie is deeply familiar with the Kabbalah, I'm sure, or some version of the Kabbalah. We realize that it's about the British Empire utilizing the control of technology and science, and that's why at the end of the film, the Tesla-type technology has to be controlled by Moriarty, who comes into play in part two, which actually ends up being about the war machine, defense contracting, uh, and a false flag concerning World War I, which I'll do probably in another video. But here it's about the genetic manipulation uh, in secret societies to create the future offspring, who will be the elite bloodline, the Ubermensch, so to speak, or the magical child, and ultimately a kind of antichrist, and that's what the film actually presents. Antichrist in the book of Revelation is spoken of as having a kind of mimicked version of the resurrection. He's dead and then he comes back, or so it appears. And that's really what Blackwood is trying to do, is to create his own mythology and to make himself into a magical being, a kind of god being, apotheosis. But actually what happens is, as we see at the end of the film, the raven shows up, the alchemical raven shows up at every important scene and in a way kind of is the messenger or the guide, if you will, the totem of Sherlock himself, who remember had to actually go through the ritual to see how the whole system worked. So actually the film isn't necessarily uh, an anti-esoteric, uh, anti-supernatural presentation. It's something along the lines of a both and presentation and that's why ultimately it's not against the esoteric it's actually an alchemical presentation and that makes sense because that's what we see so often in Hollywood is an obsession with alchemy and the process of not just the main character but also the viewer going through the same alchemical process as the main character if you like this video be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel, Jay's Analysis, and you can also subscribe to my talks, lectures, interviews, and podcasts for $4.95 a month at <clears throat> jaysanalysis.com or for $60 a year. Thank you.